welcome to a tale of a delicious adventure in a wonderful land. Can't you tell it's going to be delicious? Can't you smell it already? Oh, how I love that gorgeous smell. You all heard of Cowberry, Roundtree, Brown Nestleton, and Wonka. What's that? You say, what's Wonka? You mean you don't know what Wonka is? Why, Wonka chocolate, of course. I admit that Willy Wonka chocolate is fairly new, but it's the greatest chocolate ever invented. Why, Willy Wonka himself is the most amazing, most fantastic, most extraordinary chocolate maker the world has ever seen. He's created things like, say, why, I'm not going to tell you what he's created. You came here to see it for yourself, and I'll let you just do that. But before I do, I should perhaps fill you in what's been going on here lately. Because Mr. Willy Wonka makes the best chocolate in the whole wide world, three other chocolate makers, known as Mr. Flippagubber, Mr. Pronos, and Mr. Slowword, sent spies to work for Mr. Willy Wonka in order to discover his secrets. Well, they must have been really good spies because soon afterwards, these three chocolate makers began making such delicious Wonka favorites as ice cream that never melts, chewing gum that never loses its flavor, and candy balloons that you can blow up in a huge size before you pop them with a pan and gobble them all up. Mr. Wonka didn't know what to do. He didn't know who the spies were, and if he continued operating his factory, all his sight. All his secrets might be stolen, so he did the only thing he could. He sent all the workers home and closed the factory. You might think that this would be the end of Mr. Willy Wonka, but no sorry, not him. After months and months went by, the factory suddenly began operating again, but no one knew who was running the place. No one ever went in, and no one ever came out. The only thing... The only thing anyone can see were shadows dancing in front of the lighted windows. Mighty strange. Well, anyways, back to the story. There will be a big article in the town's paper saying that Mr. Willy Wonka, in order to sell lots of candies again, was running a contest. Yes, sir. That's right. A contest. He has secretly wrapped a golden ticket under ordinary wrapping paper in five ordinary candy bars. The candy bars were said to be found anywhere, in any shop, in any street, in any town, in any country in the world, upon a counter where Wonka candies were sold. Five winners will tour Mr. Wonka's new factory and take home enough chocolate for the rest of their lives. Now that, my friends, is where our story begins. Four of the tickets have already been found. Oh, by the way, would you like to meet the four lucky people? All right, listen, and watch carefully. I think they're here somewhere. Let's see. Augustus Gloop? Where are you, Augustus Gloop? Chocolate. 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 I love chocolate. Mmm. Food. Food. Mmm. I must eat all the time. Mmm. Chocolate. This golden ticket is my meal ticket to eat and eat and eat and eat. Mm. Chocolate. Chocolate. Well, uh, friends, that was our first golden ticket finder, Augustus Gloop. Let's see now if the lucky girl who found our second golden ticket this year. Violet? Violet Bogard? I'm a gum chewer normally, but when I heard about these ticket things in Mr. Wonka's, I laid off the gum and switched to can bars in the hope of striking the lucky. Now, of course, I'm right back on gum. I just adore gum. I can't do without it. I munch it all day long, except for a few minutes at meal times when I take it out and stick it behind my ear for safekeeping. To tell you the honest truth, I simply wouldn't feel comfortable if I didn't have that little wedge of gum to chew on every moment of the day. I really wouldn't. My mother says it's not lay like and looks ugly to see girls draw going up and down like mine do all the time. But I don't agree. And who does she criticize anyway? Because if you ask me, I see that her jaws are going up and down almost as much as mine are just from yelling at me every minute of the day. And now it may interest you to know that this piece of gum I'm chewing right at this moment is one I've been working on for over three months solid. That's a record. That is. 
It's been the record held by my best friend, Miss Cornelia Prince Meadow. And was she ever mad? It's my most treasured possession now. This piece of gum is. At nights, I just stick at the end of my bedpost, and it's as good as ever in the mornings. A bit hard at first, maybe. Such a lucky uh, girl. Isn't she uh, uh, wonderful? The third golden ticket was found by another lucky girl. Her name is Veruca Salt. Is Veruca here now? Where's my golden ticket? I want my golden ticket. Oh, yes, here it is. As soon as I told my father that I simply had to have one of those golden tickets, he went out into the town and started buying up all the Wonka candy bars he could lay his hands on. Hundreds of them he must have bought. Thousands of hundreds. Then he had them loaded onto trucks and sent directly to his own factory. He's in the peanut business, you see, and he's got about a hundred women working for him over at his joint, shelling peanuts for roasting and salting. That's what they do all day long. Those women, they just sit there shelling peanuts. And one day he says to them, Okay, girls, from now on you can stop shelling peanuts and start shelling the wrappers off these crazy candy bars instead. And they did. He had every, every worker in the place yanking the paper off those bars, full speed ahead from morning till night. Three days went by. It was terrible. I got more and more upset each day, and every time he came home, I would yell at him, where's my golden ticket? I want my golden ticket. And I would lie for hours, kicking and yelling on the floor in the most disturbing way. But then, suddenly on the evening of the 4th, one of his one workers yelled, I've got it, a golden ticket. And he said, give it to me, quick. So she did. And he rushed it home and gave it to me. And now, I'm all smiles, and we're a happy home once again. Thank you, Veruca. Isn't she a lovely girl? Now, the fourth and last ticket was found by a boy named Mike TV. I wonder if Mike got his ticket with him. Where are you, Mike? Of course I've got a golden ticket. But why can't everyone just leave me alone? I want to watch television. I watch television all day. Even the crummy ones, where there's no shooting. I like the gangsters the best. They're terrific. Those gangsters, especially when they start pumping each other full of lead, or flashing the old stilettos, or giving the, each other the one, two, three with their knuckle dusters. Oh boy, what wouldn't I give to be doing that myself? It's the life, I tell you. It's terrific. And that, folks, is uh, Mike TV. Sorry for uh, bothering you, Mike. Now we're going to take a look at the hero of our story, Charlie, Charlie Bucket and her family. Let me introduce them to you. This is the home of Charlie Bucket. Seven people live here. There's only two rooms and only one bed. So you can see that life is extremely uncomfortable. These two very old people are the father, mother, Mr. Bucket. Their names are Grandpa Joe and Grandma Josephine. These two very old people are the father, mother, and Mrs. Bucket. Their names are Grandpa George and Grandma Joseph Georgina. The bed was given to the four old grandparents because they were so old and tired, and of course, they're all over 90 years old. This is Mr. Bucket. This is Mrs. Bucket. They and little Charlie sleep in the other room upon a mattress on the floor. As you know, this can be very cold in the winter time. They can't buy a better house because they don't have any money and there isn't any better jobs. Mr. Bucket is the only one that can work in well. He lost his job a few weeks ago. Yes, it's very sad. But you see, the toothpaste factory had to close down. Without Mr. Willy Wonka's chocolate factory open, no one ever got cavities anymore. And they didn't buy any toothpaste in. Well, you know how that goes. Oh, wait, gee, I almost forgot. This is, our, this is the hero of our story, Charlie Bucket. Charlie is a nice girl. Of course, she's been starving lately. In fact, the whole family has. I'm worried about Charlie, though. Why did she know that Charlie is so weak from not eating that she walks slowly instead of running like the other kids so she can save her energy? Well, I said far too much already. 
Let's find out what's happening at the bucket home right now. Uh, I, I guess I'll see you later. Well, I see that four children have found golden tickets. I wonder who the fifth lucky person will be. I hope it's no one like that repulsive glue boy. We're as spoiled as that Faruka salt girl. Oh, as beastly as that bubble bumping violent bull god. Or living such as a useless life as that TV boy. It makes you wonder if all children behave like this nowadays. Like these brats we've been hearing about. Of course not. Some do, of course. In fact, quite a lot of them do, but not all. And now, there's only one ticket left. Quite so. And just as sure as I'll be having cabbage soup for supper tomorrow, that tickle goes some nasty little beast who doesn't deserve it. I bet I know somebody who'd like to find that golden ticket. Charlie, how about it? Yes, I sure would, Grandpa Joe. You know, it just about makes me faint when I have to pass by Mr. Wonka's chocolate factory every day as I go to school. The smell of that wonderful chocolate makes me so dreamy that I often fall asleep and bump into Mr. Wonka's fence. But I guess I should realize that dreams don't come true. Just imagine, me imagining that I could win the fifth golden ticket. Why, it's... it's... It's pure imagination. Well, my boy, it may be pure imagination, but I've heard tell that what you imagine sometimes comes true. Gee, you really think so, Grandpa Joe? Gee, I wonder. Several days later, the bucket's home. You know, it sure would have been nice if Charlie had won that fifth golden ticket. You mean, with the money that we gave him... For his birthday? For her birthday yesterday? Yes, the money we gave her to buy the one piece of candy she gets every year. And just think how long it took you two to, to save that old pen. Yes, and that was really a shame. But think of how Charlie enjoyed the candy. He just loves really Wonka chocolate. She didn't really act that disappointed. No, she didn't. Well, he might not have acted disappointed, but that's because he's a fine boy and wouldn't want any of us to feel sorry for her. Why, that girl wouldn't be dis what girl wouldn't be disappointed? I sure wish she'd won. I'd do anything for that girl. Why, I'd even Mom, Dad, Grandpa Joe, Grand folks, you'll never believe it. You'll never believe what happened. Good gracious, Charlie. What happened? Well, I was walking home, and the wind was so cold, and the snow was blowing so hard, and I couldn't see where I was going, and I was looking down to protect my face, and, and... Go on, Charlie. Go on, Charlie. What is it? And there it was, just lying there in the snow, kind of buried. And I looked around, and no one seemed to look as if they had lost anything. And and so I picked it up, and I wiped it off, and I couldn't believe my eyes. You found the golden, the golden ticket. ticket! Charlie found the golden ticket. Hooray! 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 He did it! He did it! No, no, I I found a 50 pence. But but then I thought it wouldn't hurt if I bought a Wonka Whipple Scrumptious Fudge Mellow Delight, since it was my 50 pence, and I was just so hungry for one. Yes? Yes, go on, go on. Well, I took off the wrapper slowly, and... You found the golden ticket! Charlie found the golden ticket, hooray! 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 He did, he did it! No, 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 I ate the candy. There wasn't any golden ticket. But then I still had 45 pence left, and well, you know how I love chocolate. Oh, Charlie, you're not sick, are you? You didn't spend all of your money on... Well, no. As a matter of fact, I bought another Whipple Scrumptious Fudge Mellow Delight, and, and I found the fifth golden ticket! You what? I did, I did, I really did. I found the fifth golden ticket! Hooray! Hooray! Yeah. 
It's off to the Charlie Chocolate Factory. Today's the big day. The 1st of February where Charlie and Grandpa Joe are standing in front of the big gate of Mr. Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. Boy, Grandpa Joe, I sure am glad that Dad let you take me today. Well, I guess he just feels that we understand each other, Charlie. Plus, you seem to know all about Willy Wonka and what's happened to him. Well, he's been an important man in this town for a good long time. A lot of people said some unkind things about him after he closed down the factory, but I always felt he had his reasons. Actually, I'm quite excited about this whole golden ticket thing. It's a good excuse to see what's going on in the factory and how he's running it. Speaking of the golden ticket, Grandpa Joe, could I read it one more time? I know it sounds silly, but the whole thing just seems so magical. Ah, uh, sure, Charlie. Just let me see if I can find it. Here you go. Let's see now. It says, greetings to you, the lucky finder of this golden ticket from Mr. Willy Wonka. I shake you warmly by the hand. Tremendous things are in store for you. Many wonderful surprises await you. For now, I do invite you to come to my factory and be my guest for one whole day, you and all the others who are lucky enough to find my golden tickets. I, Willy Wonka, will conduct you around the factory myself, showing you everything that there is to see, and afterwards, when it is time to leave, you'll be escorted home by a procession of large trucks. These trucks, I can promise you, will be loaded with enough delicious edibles to last you and your entire household for many years. If, at any time thereafter, you should run out of supplies, you have only to come back to the factory and show this golden ticket, and I shall be happy to refill your cupboard with whatever you want. In this way, you will be able to keep yourself supplied with tasty morsels for the rest of your life. But this is by no means the most exciting thing that will happen on the day of your visit. I am preparing other surprises that are even more marvelous and more fantastic for you and for all my beloved golden ticket holders. Mystic and marvelous surprises that will entrance, delight, intrigue, astonish, and perplex you beyond measure. In your wildest dreams, you could not imagine that such things could happen to you. Just wait and see. And now, here are your instructions. The day I have chosen for the first is the first for the visit is the first day of the month of February. On this day, and on no other, you must come to the factory gates at 10 o'clock sharp in the morning. Don't be late, and you are allowed to bring with you either one or two members of your own family to look after you and to ensure that you don't get into mischief. One more thing, be certain to have this ticket with you, otherwise you will not be admitted. Signed, Willy Wonka. And today is the first day of February. And say, Charlie, we're already here. And so is everyone else. Wow. There he is. That's him, Willy Wonka. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, everyone. Let's see now. I wonder if I can recognize all of you by the pictures in the newspaper. Let's see. You're Augustus Gloop. Uh, yes, and this is my mother. Delighted to meet you both. Delighted, delighted. You're Violet Beauregard. So what if I am? Let's just get on with the whole thing, huh? And you must be Miss Beauregard. Very happy to meet you. Very happy. I think you are. Yes, you're Veruca Salt. And you must be Mrs. and Mr. Salt. Don't shake his hand, Daddy. It's probably all sticky and chocolatey from working in this factory. After all, he does only run a silly little factory. He's not important enough for you to bother shaking hands with anyways. You're my TV. Enchanted to meet you. Yes, enchanted. Come on. I'm missing all my favorite TV shows right now. And we're the TVs. Pleased to meet you. Overjoyed. Overjoyed. And you must be the girl who just found the ticket yesterday. Congratulations. You're Charlie Bucket, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And this, ma'am, is my Grandpa Joe. Howdy, Mr. Wonka. Howdy, Mr. Wonka. I'm real pleased to meet you. How do you do, Mr. Grandpa Joe? How do you do? Well, now, is that everybody? Hmm. Why? Well, I guess it is. Good. Now, will you please follow me? Our tour is about to begin. But... Do keep together. I shouldn't like to lose any of you at this stage of the proceedings. Oh, dear me, no. Here we are. You're this big red door, please. 
That's right. It's nice and warm inside. I have to keep a warm inside the factory because my workers are used to an extremely hot climate. They can't stand the cold. They'd perish if they went outdoors in this weather. Why, they'd freeze to death. But who are these workers? All in good time, I do. Boy, you shall see everything as we go along. Are all of you inside? Good. Now, would you please close the door? Thank you. Our adventure begins in the chocolate room where a chocolate river runs across the land across by trees and pipes nearby. I'm tired. It seems like we've been turning left, turning right, and turning left again for a whole hour or so. Where's the food? I'm hungry. I want to eat. Do you all hear me? I want to eat now. Did you notice that we've been going downward for the longest time, Grandpa Joe? Well, yes, Charlie. I think that's because I heard that all the most important factories are located deep down below the surface. I wonder why. Well, I think I heard Mr. Wonka say that there would nearly not nearly be enough space for them up on top. Some of the rooms we are going to see are enormous. Some are supposed to be even larger than football fields. Here we are, everybody. This is the chocolate room. This room is the nerve center of the whole factory. It's the heart of my whole operation. I don't see anything but that old-looking river over there. Uh. And just look at those numerous pipes over there. There must be 10 or 11 of them. I wonder what they're for. Gee, Mr. Wonka, what's wrong with your river? It's all brown and muddy-looking. Nothing's wrong with it, my boy. Nothing. Nothing at all. It's all chocolate. Every drop of that river is hot, melted chocolate of the finest quality. The very finest quality. There's enough chocolate in there to fill every bathtub in the entire country. And all the swimming pool as well. Isn't it terrific? And just look at my pipes. They suck up the chocolate and carry it away to all the other rooms in the factory where it is needed. Thousands of gallons an hour, my dear children. Thousands and thousands of gallons. Look! Look over there! What is it? It's moving. It's walking. What's a little person? A little man down there behind one of those pipes. She's right, Grandpa. It is a little man. Can you see him? There's two of them. My gosh! So there is... There's more than two. There's four or five. What are they doing? Where do they come from? Who are they? Aren't they fantastic? Look at their funny long hair. They can't be real people. Nonsense. Of course they are real people. They're only some of my workers. That's impossible. There are no people in the world as small as that. No people in the world as small as that? Then let me tell you something. There are more than 3,000 of them working in my factory. They are Oompa Loompas. Oompa Loompas? What do you mean? I'm flooded direct from Loboland. And oh, what a terrible country it is. Nothing but thick jungles infested by the most dangerous beasts in the world. Horn swallowers and snows wingers and those terrible wicked wangdoodles. A Wayne Judo would eat ten of Loompas for breakfast and come galloping back for a second helping. When I went out there, I found the little Oompa Loompas living in tree houses. They had to live in tree houses to escape the Wayne Judos, the Horn Swagglers, and the Snozwangers. When I found them, they were practically starving to death. They were living on green caterpillars, wood beetles, and eucalyptus leaves, and the bark of a bong bong tree. They loved cacao beans too, but they only found about one or two a year. They used to dream about cacao beans all night and talk about them all day. It just so happens that the cacao bean is the thing from which all chocolate is made. So I myself use billions of cacao beans every week in my factory. So I talked to the leader of the tribe in Umbalumbish and told him that his people could have all the cacao beans they wanted if they would just come and work and live with me in my factory. Well, the leader was so happy that he leaped up in the air and threw his bowl of mashed caterpillars right out of his treehouse window. 
So here they are. They're wonderful workers. They all speak English now. They love dancing music, and they are always making up songs. So I expect you will hear a good deal of singing today from time to time. Mommy, Daddy, I want an Oompa Loompa. Get me an Oompa Loompa. Loompa. I want an Oompa Loompa right away. I want to take time with me. Go on, Daddy. Get me an Oompa Loompa. Now, now, my pet. We mustn't interrupt Mr. Wonka. But I want an Oompa Loompa. Oh, all right, Veruca. All right. But I can't get a few this second, sweetie. Please be patient. I'll see that you have one before the day is out. Augustus, Augustus, sweetheart, I don't think you better do that. Oh, no, I guess, please, I beg of you not to do that. My chocolate must be untouched by human hands. Augustus, didn't you hear what the man said? Come away from the river at once. Mmm, this stuff is terrific. I need a whole bucket to drink it all properly. Augustus. You must come away. You're dirtying my chocolate. Augustus, you may be giving that nasty cold of yours about a million people all over the country. Be careful, Augustus. You're leaning too far out. Ah. Uh. Save him. He goes round. He can't swim a yard. Save him. Save him. Help, help. Get him out. Don't just stand there. Do something. He thinks that's closer to the point. There he goes. Oh, help! Murder! Police! Augustus! Come back at once! Where are you going? He disappeared. He disappeared! Where's the pipe go? Quick, call the fire brigade. Keep calm. He'll come out of it just fine. You wait and see. But he'll be turned to marshmallows. Impossible! And why not, may I ask? Because that pipe doesn't go anywhere near the marshmallow room. It leads to the room where I make the most kind of delicious strawberry flavored chocolate coated fudge. Poor Augustus, losing him by the pound all over the country tomorrow morning. Ha 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 He'll be chocolate fudge. Never, I wouldn't allow it. And why not? Because the taste would be terrible. Just imagine it. Augustus flavor chocolate coated gloop. No one would buy it. I don't want to think about it. And nor do I. And I do promise you, madam, that your darling boy is perfectly safe. If he's safe, then where is he? Lead me to him at this instant. Go over to one of the Oompa Loompas and ask them to show you where the fudge room is. When you get there, take a long stick and start poking around inside the big chocolate mixing barrel. He should be there, but don't leave him in there for too long, though, or he's liable to get poured out into the fudge boiler, and that really would be a disaster, wouldn't it? My fudge would become quite uneatable. What? What what did you say? I'm joking. Forgive me. Goodbye, Miss Loop. See you later. Augustus Gloop, Augustus Gloop, the great big greedy nincompoop. How long could we allow this beast to gorge and guttle, feed on feast on everything he wanted to? Great Scott, it simply wouldn't do. So what we do in such cases as this, we use the gentle touch. Come on, we cry, the time is ripe to send him shooting up the pipe. But don't, dear children, be alarmed, Augustus Gloop will not be harmed. Although, of course, we must admit he will be altered quite a bit. He'll change from what he's been when he goes to the fudge machine. Slowly the wheels go round and round. The cogs begin to grind and pound. A hundred knives go slice, slice, slice. We add some sugar, cream, and spice. Then out he comes. And now, by grace, a miracle has taken place. This boy who's only just before was loved by men from shore to shore. This greedy brute, this lousy ear, is loved by people everywhere. For who could hate or bear a grudge against a luscious bit of fudge? Poor Augustus. Well, I bet we've seen the last of him for a while. Now, folks, you're in for a real treat. Did you know that Mr. Willy Wonka had his very own yacht? That's right, his very own. And the old boy is a sharp. It's bright pink and it has about ten Oompa Loompas inside pulling on all the oars. Well, there's no point of telling you all about the boat, because in just a second, you should. 
be able to see it coming up the tunnel. Yes, yes, here it comes now. It sure is dark in here. How can these dumb little loopers see where they're going? <laughs> There's no knowing where they're going. There's no earthly way of knowing which direction they are going. There's no knowing where they're rowing or which way the river's flowing. Not a speck of light is showing, so the danger must be growing. For the rowers keep on rowing, and they're certainly not showing any signs that they're slowing. He's gone off his rocker. He's crazy. He's balmy. He's nutty. He's screwy. He's batty. He's dippy. He's dirty. He's daffy. He's goofy. He's buggy. He's wacky. He's loony. Oh no! Switch on the lights, real faster, faster. Look, Grandpa, there's a door in the wall. It says cream room, dairy cream, whipped cream, violet cream, coffee cream, pineapple cream, vanilla cream, and hair cream? Hair cream? You don't eat hair cream. Rowan, there's no time to answer silly questions. Look, another door, whip room. Whips, what on earth do you use whips for? For whipping cream, of course. How can you whip cream without whips? Whipped cream isn't whipped cream a lot at all, unless it's been whipped with whips. Just as a poached egg isn't a poached egg unless it's been stolen from the woods in the dead of night. Roll on, please. Bean room. Cacao beans, coffee ke beans, jelly beans, and half beans. Half beans? You won yourself. No time for arguing. Press on, press on. Stop. The boat. We're there. Where? Where? There, up. What's up there? You'll see. Continue our adventure in a room called the Invention Room, where you would see it's filled with stoves and pot pipes and pots and kennels and many strange machines. This is the most important room in the entire factory. All my most new secret inventions are cooking and simmering in here. Old Fickle Guru would give his front teeth to be allowed inside, and just for three minutes, so would Prod Nose and Slugworth and all the other rotten chocolate makers. But now, listen to me. I want no messing about when you go in. No touching, no meddling, and no tasting. Is that agreed? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, we, yes, we touch won't a touch thing. a thing. Everlasting gobstoppers. They're completely new. I'm inventing them for children who are given very little pocket money. You can put an everlasting gobstopper in your mouth, and you can suck it, and 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 it will never get any smaller. It's like gum. It's not like gum. Gum is for chewing, and if you try chewing one of these gobstoppers here, you'd break your teeth off. But they taste terrific, and they change color once a week. Now, that machine over there makes hair toffee, but it's not quite perfected yet. But when I do, there'll be no excuse for any more little boys and girls going about with their bald heads. But, Mr. Wonka, little boys and girls never go about with... Don't argue, my dear child. Please don't argue. Now, over there, if you will all step this way, I will show you something I am terrifically proud of. Oh, do be careful. Please stand back. Here we go. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. You mean that's all? That's all? Don't you all know what this is? By gum? It's gum! It's a stick of chewing gum! Right you are! It's a stick of the most amazing, fabulous, and sensational gum in the world. This gum is a fantastic gum, in that it's a chewing gum meal. It's a whole three-course dinner all by itself. When I start selling this gum in the shops, it will change everything. It will be the end of cooking, marketing, forks, plates, washing up, and garbage. This piece of gum I've just made happens to be tomato spoof, tomato 
soup, roast beef, and blueberry pie. But you can have almost anything you want. What do you mean by that? If you were to start chewing it, you would actually taste all of those things. And it fills you up. It satisfies you. Isn't it terrific? It's utterly impossible. Just so long as it's coming, I can chew it. Then that's for me. Come on, Mr. Wonka, hand over this magic gum of yours, and we'll see if this thing works. Now, Violet, let's not do anything silly. I want the gum. What's so silly? I would rather you didn't take it. You see, I haven't gotten it quite right yet. There's still one or two things. Oh, to the heck with that. Don't! Fabulous! It's great! Spit it out! Keep chewing, kiddo. Keep right on chewing, baby. This is a great day for the Beauregards. Our little girl is the first person in the world to have a chewing gum meal. No, no, no. No, it isn't ready for eating. It isn't right. You mustn't do it. Good heavens, girl. What's happening to your nose? It's turning blue. Oh, be quiet, mother, and let me finish. Your cheeks, your chin, your whole face is turning blue. Mercy save us. The girl's going blue and purple all over. Violet, you're turning violet, Violet. What is happening to you? You're glowing all over. The whole room is glowing. I told you I hadn't gotten it quite right yet. It always goes wrong when we come to the dessert. I think it's the blueberry pie that does it, but I'll get it right one day. You wait and see. Violet, you're swelling up. I feel most peculiar. You're swelling up. You're blowing up like a big balloon. Like a blueberry. Call a doctor. Bring her with a pin. Save her. It always happens like this. All the Oompa Loompas that try to finish up just as blueberries. And it's most annoying. And I just can't understand it. But I don't want a blueberry for a daughter. Put her back this instant. Tell the Oompa Loompas over there to roll Miss Beauregard into the juicing room at once. The juicing room? What for? To squeeze her. We've got to squeeze the juice out of her immediately. After that, we'll just have to see how she comes out. But don't worry, we'll get her repaired if it's the last thing we do. I am sorry about it all. I really am. Mr. Wonka, will Violet ever be all right again? She'll come out of the de-juicing machine as thin as a whistle, and she'll be purple, purple from head to toe. But there you are. That's what comes from chewing disgusting gum all day long. If it's so disgusting, then why do you make it in your factory? I can't hear a word you're saying. Come on, off you go. Follow me. Dear friends, there's surely almost nothing worse to say than some repulsive little bum who's always chewing chewing gum. The sticky habit's bound to send the chewer to a sticky end. Did any of you know a person called Miss Bigelow? This dreadful woman saw no wrong in chewing chewing all day long. And when she couldn't find her gum, she chewed, she chewed up the linoleum. Or anything that happened even here. A pair, pair of boots with the postman's ear or other people's underclothes. And once she chewed her boyfriend's nose. For years and years she chewed away, consuming 50 packs a day. Until one summer ease, alas, a horrid business came to pass. Miss Bigelow went late to bed. For half an hour, she lay in bed. At last, she put her gum away upon a special little tray and settled back and went to sleep. She managed this by counting sheep. But now, how strange. Although she slept, the, those massive jaws of her kept on chewing, chewing through the night, even there with nothing there to bite. This sleeping woman's great big trap, opening and shutting, snap, snap, snap. Faster and faster, chop, chop, chop. The noise went on and it wouldn't stop. Until at last her jaws decide to pause and open extra wide. And with the most tremendous chew, they bite the lady's tongue in two. And that is why we'll try so hard to save Miss Violet Bodegard from suffering an equal fate. She's still quite young. It's not too late. Provided she survives a cure, we hope she does. We can't be sure. As the group travels towards the next room, you will begin to see inside a glass door labeled the the nut room, where there's a great pile of nuts and nut shells going down a big rubbish chute. All right, stop here for a moment and catch your breath and take a quick peek through the glass panel of this door. But don't go in. Whatever you do, do not go into the nut room. If you go in, you'll disturb the miniature squirrels. 
Oh, look, Grandpa, look. Miniature squirrels. Jeez, there must be like a hundred of them under on that pile of walnuts over there. These squirrels are specially trained for getting the nuts out of walnuts. But why use squirrels and why not use your Oompa Loompas? Nobody can get walnuts out of walnut shells in one piece, except squirrels. I insist on only using whole walnuts in my factory, so I use squirrels to do the job. And you see how they first tap each walnut with their knuckles to make sure it's not a bad one. If it's a bad one, it makes a hollow sound and they don't bother to open it. They simply throw it down the garbage chute. Mommy, Daddy, I want a squirrel. Get me one of those squirrels. Don't be silly, sweetheart. All the, These all belong to Mr. Walker. I don't care about that. I want one. You have other pets. But all I've got at home is two dogs and four cats and six bunny rabbits and two parakeets and three canaries and a green parrot and a turtle and a bowl of goldfish and a cage of white mice and a silly old hamster. I want a squirrel. All, all, all right, my pet. Daddy will Daddy get you a squirrel just as soon as he possibly can. But I don't want any old squirrel. I want a train squirrel. Ah, very well. Wonka, uh, how much do you want for one of these crazy squirrels? Name your price. Oh, they're not for sale. She can't have one. Who says I can't? I'm going to go grab me a squirrel this very instant. No, don't. All right, I'll have you. No, no, no. All of them have jumped on her. All of them. 25 have her right arm pinned down. 25 have her left arm pinned down. 25 have her right leg anchored to the ground. 24 have her left leg. And the last squirrel, it's, it's jumped on her, climbed on her shoulders and started tap, tap, tapping on Ruka's head with its knuckles. Save her, Ruka, come back. What are they doing to her? They're testing her to see if she's a bad nut. Watch. She is a bad nut after all. Her head must have sounded quite hollow. Where are they taking her? She's going where all the other bad nuts go. Down the garbage chute. My golly. She is going down the chute. She's gone. Where do you suppose she's gone to? That particular chute runs directly into the great main big rubbish pipe, which carries away all the rubbish from every part of the factory, all the floor sweepings, potato peelings, and rotten cabbages, fish heads, stuff like that. Who eats fish and cabbage and potatoes in this factory? I'd like to know. I do, of course. You don't think I live on cacao beans, do you? And of course, the pipe goes to the furnace in the end. Now, see here, Wonka. I think you've gone just a shade too far this time. I do indeed. M my daughter may be a bit of a frump. I, I, I don't mind admitting it. But that doesn't mean you can roast her to a crisp. I I I'll have you know, I'm extremely cross about this. I really am. Oh, don't be cross, my dear sir. I expect her to turn up again sooner or later. She may not have even gone down the pipe at all. She may just be stuck in the chute just below the entrance hole. And if that's the case, all you'll have to do is go in and pull her up again. Eureka, are you down there? Oh, oh no, the squirrels have pushed her in too. Good gracious me! What a lot of rubbish there's going to be today. What is it like down there? Angina? Help! Oh dear, what on earth is going to happen to them now? I expect someone will catch them at the bottom of the chute.
But what about the great fiery incinerator? Oh, that. They only light it every other day. Perhaps this is one of the days that they let it go out. You never know. You might be lucky. I've never seen anything like it. The children are disappearing like rabbits. Oh, well. Shall I move on? Oh, yes. My feet are getting tired. I want to watch television. If you're tired, then we'd better take the elevator. It's down the hall. Come on. Around we go in Mr. Wonka's great, eleva great glass elevator, where it appears to be an elevator surrounded by stiff glass. Wow, look at that! It's a great glass elevator! And just look at all the buttons all over! This isn't just any ordinary up and down elevator. This elevator can go sideways, long ways, and slant ways, and any other way you can possibly think of. It can visit any single room in the whole factory, and no matter where it is, you simply press the button and zing, you're off. Look, each button is labeled. And each button stands for a room. Yeah, let's see. It says strawberry juice water pistols, exploding candies for your enemies, stick jaw for talkative parents, invisible chocolate bars for eating in class, rainbow drops, suck them and you can spin in six different colors. Come on, enough, enough. We can't wait all day. Isn't there a television room in all this lot? Certainly, right there. That's for me. Hang on, everybody. I'm going to be sick. Please don't be sick. Try and stop me. Then you'd better take this. Make this awful thing stop. Can't do that. It, it won't stop till we get there. I only hope no one else is using the other elevator at this moment. Uh, what, what elevator? The one that goes opposite way on the same track as this one. Holy mac mackerel, You're, you mean we might have a collision? I've always been lucky so far. Now I am going to be sick. No, no, not now. We're nearly there. Don't spoil my hat. Some ride. Some ride. Never again. Just a minute now. Listen to me. Before we go into this television chocolate room, I must warn you, there is some dangerous stuff around here, and you must not tamper with it. Okay, everybody out. Now we are entering the te television chocolate testing room, where it's completely bare except for a large television camera at one end, a large television screen at the other end, and several bright floodlights. Here we go. This is the testing room for my very latest and greatest invention, television chocolate. But what's television chocolate? Good heavens, child. Please stop interrupting me. It works by television. I don't like television myself. I suppose it's all right in small doses, but children never seem to be able to take it in small doses. They want to sit there all day long, sitting and staring at the screen. That's me! Shut up. Thank you. Now then, the very first time I saw ordinary television, working, I was struck by a tremendous idea. If a photograph could be broken up into millions of pieces and the pieces sent whizzing through the air until they hit an antenna, then put back together again on a screen, then why couldn't I send a real bar of chocolate whizzing through the air in tiny pieces and then the pieces put together again on the other end, all ready to be eaten? Impossible. Think so? Then watch me send a bar of chocolate from one end of this room to the other by television. Bring me that chocolate bar, please. It has to be big, because whenever you send something by television, it always comes out much smaller than it is when it went in. 
Here we are then. Get ready. No, no, no. You, stop there. Uh, Mag TV, stand back. You're too close. Your dangerous rays are coming out of that thing. They could break you up into a million tiny pieces in one second. Now then, that's better. Switch on. It's on its way. It's stretching through the air above our heads in a million tiny little pieces. Quick, come over here. Take it. How can you take it? It's just a picture on a television screen. Just imagine, when I start using this across the country, a commercial flash on the screen and a voice will say, Eat Wonka's chocolates. They're the best in the world. If you don't believe us, try one for yourself. Now, bye. But Mr. Wonka, can you send other things through the air in the same way? Like people? Could you send a real life person from one place to another in the same way? A person? Are you off your rocker? But could it be done? Good heaven, child. I don't really know. I suppose it's good. Yes, I'm pretty sure it could. Of course it could, but I wouldn't like to risk it, though. It might have some very nasty results. Look at me! I'm going to be the first person in the world to be sent by television! No, 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 no! Mike! Mike! Stop! Come back! You'll be turned into a million tiny pieces! See you later, alligator! He's gone! Oh, uh, we shall have to hope for the best. We must pray that your little boy will come unharmed at the other end. We must watch the television screen. He may come through at any moment. He's taking a heck of a long time to come across. Hold everything. Watch the screen. Something's happening. Here he comes. Yes, that's him, all right. He's a midget! He, isn't he gonna get any bigger? Grab him, quick! Ugh, he's completely okay. You call that okay? He shrink! Of course he shrunk! What did you expect? This is terrible! I can't send him back to school like this. He'll get squashed. He won't be able to do anything. What did you say, Mike? Never. No, you'll not be able to watch television. I'm throwing the television set right out the window the moment we get home. I've had enough of this television thing. What, Mike? I don't care what you want or how much you jump and scream. There. Gee, how will Mike ever grow again? Well, small boys are sh extremely springy and elastic, so maybe he'll stretch if we put him on a special machine I have for testing the tough stretchiness of chewing gum. How far do you think he'll stretch? Maybe miles. Anyway, he's, he'll be awfully thin. But we'll fat him, fatten him up with my super vitamin candy. It contains all the vitamins from A to Z. Mr. TV, just hand these orders to the Oompa Loompas over there. And don't look so worried. They all come out of the wash, you know. Every single one of them. Our journey ends somewhere in the chocolate factory where Mr. Wonka, Charlie, and Grandpa Joe look to be inside. The most important thing that we've ever learned so far as children are concerned is never, never, never let them near your television set. They law and slop and lounge about and stare until their eyes pop out. Oh yes, we know it keeps them still. They don't climb out the window sill. They never fight or kick or punch. They leave you free to cook the lunch and wash the dishes in the sink. But did you ever stop to think, to wonder just exactly what this death your beloved taught? It kills imagination dead. His brain 
becomes as soft as cheese. His powers of thinking rust and freeze. He cannot think. He only sees. All right, you'll cry. All right, you'll say. But if we take this set away, what shall we do to entertain our darling children? Please explain. We'll answer this by asking you what used a darling once to do. They used to read. They used to read and read and read and read and then read and then proceed to read some more. Great Scott, Gadzocks, one half of their lives was reading books. Such wondrous, fine, fantastic fails of dragons, gypsies, queens, and whales, and pirates wearing purple pants, and sailing ships, and elephants, and cannibals crouching, crouching around the pot, stirring away at something hot. Oh, books. What well, books they used to know. Those chill children living long ago. So please, oh please, we beg you, we pray, go throw your TV set away. Fear not, because we promise you in that about a week or two of having nothing else to do, they will now begin the field to need of having something good to read. P.S. Regarding my TV, we very much regret that we shall simply have to wait and see if we can get his hype back. But if we can't, it serves him right. And somewhere in the chocolate factory, where Mr. Wonka, Charlie, and Grandpa Joe look to be inside. Which room shall we next? Hurry up, we must be going. And how many children are left now? Hmm. Well, I guess only Charlie, Mr. Wonka. You mean you're the only one left? Why, yes. But, my dear boy, that girl, you, that means you've won. Oh, I do congratulate you. I really do. I'm absolutely delighted. It couldn't be better. How wonderful is this? I had a hunch, you know, right from the beginning, that it was going to be you. Well done, Charlie. Well done. But we mustn't dilly, and we mustn't dally. We have an enormous number of things to do before the day is out. Just think of the arrangements that have to be made. Wait, Mr. Wonka, I'm afraid I don't understand any of this. What are you talking about? Oh, do forgive me. I get carried away at times. I forgot you didn't know. Know what? You know, Charlie, I love my chocolate factory. Tell me, Charlie, do you love my chocolate factory? Think carefully, because it's very important how you feel. Well, Mr. Wonka, all that I can say is that I've never spent a more fantastic day anywhere in my whole life. I've been very, very happy. Do I love this factory? Yes, yes, I think I do. It means a great deal to me. Mr. Wonka, why do you ask? Well, of course, Charlie and all the others will receive all the candy I promised. But I want Charlie to receive much more. You see, this whole day has been a contest. It's been a contest to find out who would be the best person for the job. What job? Well, you see, I'm tired, Charlie. I'm not getting any younger, and it isn't easy as it once was to carry out my ideas. I need some help, and that means you. Me? Yes, I would like you and Grandpa Joe, and of course, all the rest of your family, to move here and live here permanently. I would like to have someone who will take over after I've gone. I have no family, and I can think of no one I would like to run the factory more than you. This would be after I've trained you and taught you everything I know, of course. But I've watched you all day, and you are the type of person that will appreciate this factory and care for it as I have all these years. Will you accept my offer? If you do, everything that I have is yours. Will I? Wow, this is more than I could have ever imagined. Will I? Of course I will, Mr. Wonka. Thank you, thank you. Just think of it, Grandpa Joe. Wait until we tell Dad and Mom and the grand folks. It's going to be our chocolate factory, and we're never, ever going to starve again. Just think of all that chocolate. Oh, just you wait and see.